Hello friends, welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach, and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a relationship. I'm here to help you figure out what's really going on in your relationship to help get you out and on the road to recovery. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some physical issues that can come with any kind of abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, you name it. Um, A lot of times when you are in an abusive relationship, you start to have a lot of physical health issues and it's just not talked about enough. I know I've mentioned it a lot throughout all many of my podcasts and I've said, oh, I need to talk about this later. I'll circle back. Um, And I just haven't done that yet. Um, It's kind of a a hefty thing to talk about because it was, you know, your physical health journey and your mental health journey, just you as a person, the things that we experience, it can be really a lot. Um, And so I'm just going to try to talk about things that came up for me and, you know, the confusion that you feel at the time when you don't understand that this can and probably is related to the abuse you're experiencing because you don't know it's abuse yet. Um, and I guess how I'm doing now. So, uh, before I dive in, I'll talk about my struggles and successes. A struggle is that I've been really struggling with social media. Um, I have been Like I started tapering off of making content on my abuse channels, of which I have several, and I was just like not feeling motivated. Um, And so I stopped creating for the most part. Maybe there'd be like some recycled content or, you know, something would come up. Okay, I'll post that. But I just haven't been feeling like posting, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, And I started to get really frustrated with social media. Um, I'm really over the fact that TikTok is just all ads right now. I don't know if yours is the same. Um... It's not really what I go to TikTok for, and I just see a lot of what seems to be um, like fake people pretending that their life is really perfect and, you know, same old, same old content. I'm just like, I'm at a point where like I'm getting older. I've been doing a lot of healing. Again, I will never say that I'm healed. I have a long way to go. We all do. I do believe it's like a lifelong journey, Um, but I'm getting to a point where I just want to see people like me who are honest and real and not necessarily like acting. Um, I just want to see real people. And so I was kind of like, man, I think I'm going to take a break from social media. And then I woke up one morning to two things that weren't even that big of a deal. And I was like, okay, I'm done. And I deleted all my apps. Um, I still have threads and Twitter just cause like they haven't really been, um, bothersome, I guess. So I deleted my apps. Oh, I do still have my, um, I do still have TikTok, just not my views channel. I'm just using my like little baby one. That's like once a week, I'll post a video of like playing Legos with my son or something of like my son's hand in the corner. But, um, those are the ones that still feel semi safe for me. So I'm like, cool. Deleted Instagram, um, Facebook, YouTube, and I'm totally off and I plan to be off for at least a couple of weeks because I'm about to visit my family. And so the success in all of that is that I feel great. Over the last few days since deleting my social media, I've had more energy. I have slept better. I just feel happier. I feel lighter. I feel less stressed. So we're going to see how this goes. For now, I'm still creating the podcast. I'm still interested in talking about abuse. Like I'm not sitting here like they're forcing me to do this. I still want to give back to the community. I still want to share the knowledge and experience that I have, Um, but I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if I will come back on social media and be like, okay, this feels better. I needed a break. Or if I'll come back and be like, nope, this is really messy and I don't have the energy for it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, But I do appreciate everyone who's been here along on this ride with me um, and hopefully are supportive of me taking that break because your mental health and your well-being and your physical health and all that is more important than social media by far. So um, if you're considering doing that, I highly encourage taking a break because like I said, I'm on like day four and I do not miss it. Someone asked me, they're like, are you going through like withdrawals? And I was like, absolutely not. Um, So I guess that's a sign that I made the right choice. Okay. So let's talk about some of the physical issues as usual. Um, I try not to just sit here and talk about me and like, this is my life and this is what I went through or, you know, specifically my abuser did this. Um, I want to make it like this can happen or you might experience this and things like that. But at the same time, I know that a lot of you come to my content because when you hear me talking about my story, it's relatable and you apply it to your lives and you learn from it. So I am going to just talk about for now, the things that I experienced, um, 
I was hospitalized a few times while I was with my abuser with like acute um, stomach gastrointestinal problems. Um, the first time was within a week. And looking back, I do believe that it's because I was under so much stress and pressure and was already being um, abused in many ways, which again, at the time, it's it does not how we think abuse looks, but it, I was already being tormented, pressured, all of those things. Um, and I was feeling very yucky. I was feeling very conflicted. I was feeling, um, it just wasn't good. And my body was screaming at me, I believe to get out, to get away, to reach back into some safe spaces that I had. Um, and I didn't, I leaned into the love bombing and the, you know, trauma bomb that was being developed. And so I got very, very like violently ill Had to go to the hospital, had to get several liters of fluids and things like that. And, um, it happened again, probably, I believe it was two other times I had forgotten about one and I was looking through my medical records and I was like, okay, um, cool, great. Um, where it was the same kind of thing, mysterious, acute, um, gastrointestinal issues, you know, going in, getting tests done, um, different kinds of tests each time and coming back and conclusive and just saying you have gastroenteritis or something like that. Um, and of course those, you know, acute issues went away, it would be like, boom, severe, you know, stomach issues, vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, you know, keeled over, like, oh my gosh. Um, and that would go away after, you know, some liquids and some care and some rest and things like that. Um, but for someone who's otherwise healthy to have like repeated bouts of like inexplicable health issues like that, that's a big sign that there might be something else going on. Because if you don't know this, um, I feel like as a society, we don't talk about this enough, but your brain is directly connected to your gut. And um, if your gut is not well, if you have a gut imbalance, probably your mental health is going to be suffering. So if like, okay, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, a scientist, um, but I have read a lot about this because I had a lot of gut issues. Like I said, like if you have gut issues because you're not eating well, or you have an allergy, or you have some kind of like other kind of thing going on. The bad bugs are taking over. The good bugs are like gone. Your mental health is going to suffer. You might have depression. You might have other things like that, that you wouldn't usually have if your gut was well, and then vice versa. If your brain is not well, um, for whatever reason, you're really stressed out, blah, blah, blah. Your gut can have that, um, tilt tipping of the scales as well. They are talking to each other. They're working together. Um, and that's why a lot of people will say, and I absolutely agree that if someone's emotionally abusing you, but they're not specifically like blatantly physically abusing you, they're physically abusing you as well, because your brain is in your body. Um, and I believe all types of abuse, like, again, not to take away from how severe physical abuse is, um, it is its own thing, but I do believe everything that an abusive person can do to you is physical because it's harming your body, your brain, your well being. Financial abuse, again, it's not physical, it's not going to fall under the thing of physical abuse, but I'm just saying, as an um, umbrella term, um, it's all physical. It's all messing with you as a human being and it's horrible. So, anyway, um, I ended up getting um, a huge muscle spasm in my right trap. And that got worse and worse. It never went away. It was there for well over a year. Um, and that ended up affecting my entire right side. So I would have these flare ups of my whole right side going numb. I'd have like tingling. I lost dexterity in my right arm, which is the arm that I use as an American sign language interpreter. This is, I'm left-handed, but this is the dominant arm for interpreting for me for some reason. Um, there was a lot of like pinching pain. It felt very arthritic. Um, and it would be every muscle and joint on my right side, all the way down to my toes would be it would hurt. Um, they, I would be stiff, um, to the point where I was going to have to take a step back from interpreting because I was in so much pain. Um, and that came with, you know, headaches, migraines, um, I had a lot of fatigue. I would be so tired. I would be falling asleep, but then I couldn't sleep at night or I couldn't fall asleep to take a nap because my brain was so wired. I was walking on eggshells. You know, if you've experienced emotional abuse or really any kind of abuse, a lot of the time your brain is just so, um, a lot of times when I talk about how my sleep was during that time, I would finally fall asleep. And if I heard a sound, I felt like my brain would just zing awake. Like 
Las Vegas with all the lights off and then all of a sudden they turn the lights on and every single light in Vegas comes on at the same time. That's how I could feel my brain just like waking up. And so sleep issues, um, you know, obviously insomnia would come with that. But with that whole right side of my body, um, we did a lot of testing. We did MRI for um, multiple sclerosis. We did Lyme disease. We did rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis. We did several other things. They checked my levels. They did all these blood tests and everything. Um, the only thing that came back <clears throat> was in the x-rays that I had a muscle spasm. But when you're in these situations and you have these kinds of, again, inexplicable medical issues, and obviously like we can talk about the problems with like medical, um, you know, providers, not understanding things or not making connections um, that like, are you safe at home? And like, is the victim going to say, no, I'm not safe at home. Cause a lot of times they don't really understand that they're not safe at home or maybe they're protecting the abuser. So this is like a whole other issue. Um, but a lot of times we will have a plethora of unexplained things where, you know, a test come back and like, well, you have this, but it's not really that huge of an issue where you have this. Um, but I don't know why, or, you know, everything looks great, but you're still having these problems. I don't know what else to do for you. And that is the same for, you know, anyone who's had chronic illness, um, autoimmune disorders, it's the same kind of thing. So if you're listening, you get it. The thing is that a lot of people have chronic illness and autoimmune disorders because of abuse, be it childhood abuse or neglect, be it abuse in a, an adult relationship, um, you know, whatever it comes from suffering from any kind of abuse can lead to you having long-term physical health issues. Um, and so essentially I ended up, um, I mean, I did a lot of things to try to fix my physical health because again, there wasn't like an answer. There wasn't something that could be like, oh, you have this, so you're going to need to make some lifestyle changes or you have that. So we're going to need to do some work on, you know, this muscle trap or this muscle spasm that's causing all your problems or whatever it was. It was just like, we have a muscle spasm. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> and so I went to acupuncture, which would help very, very briefly, like maybe a day or two, I would feel better. And then the flare up would happen again. I tried all kinds of like natural solutions. Like if you're listening and you're like, she's crazy, it's fine. Like, um, essential oils and, um, I can't even, I don't know, like herbal remedies and like tea, just anything I could think of to like help my body. Um, I did get in touch with a naturopath. They tested what was going on in my gut. I had a severe gut imbalance, um, which again can be caused by many things. So I quit. It was recommended that I quit drinking coffee, alcohol, eating sugar, soy, dairy, and gluten. And so I did that. I was like eating like avocados by the gallon because I needed like some healthy fat. I was eating a lot of meat at that time, trying to like I mean, I was getting like severe withdrawals from all those things. It was really hard. But the point is that I quit all those things. I helped get my gut back in balance, you know, by changing the diet, doing all that stuff. And it helped for a little while. It relieved some of my pain for a little while. But if the cause of most of your issues is still there, right? Um, if you are having body like damage to your body because of cigarettes, and you're doing all these other things to try to help the problems that you're having, but you're still smoking cigarettes, you're still getting sick. You're still making yourself sick. You're still ingesting those toxins, right? Um, <clears throat> and so I was trying to do all these things, but the abuser was still there and the abuse was still happening. So of course, even with all the links I was going to, to try to feel better and help my body get better, thinking that like, it was just a me problem. Um, the abuse was still happening. So the flare ups were still happening. I can't tell you what was happening in my gut because I didn't continually send in specimens to get tested. I'm not going to say more than that. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was still happening. And so I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I do like to keep these a little shorter for you. I know you're very busy. Um, but you're probably wondering like, okay, what's next? So whether you had any of the problems that I had, again, acute random things you went to the hospital for, you went to the doctor for, they couldn't explain it. Long-term pain, you know, obviously insomnia, headaches. Um, there are, there's a massive list of things that could come your way. Um, you know, doctors giving you tests, but it's all in, inconclusive, or maybe they're probably like, I, I feel like you're finding this in your head, that medical gaslighting, right? Cause they don't understand what's going on. Um, <clears throat> 
the thing that helped me was getting away from my abuser. I got away from my abuser and very quickly, a lot of those things went away. Um, and some people, when I do talk about physical abuse on social media or physical, um, symptoms like that on social media, they're like, well, mine didn't go away. Yours might not go away. Yours might very well be happening for a very long time, especially if you're not in a place where your nervous system's calm or you're, you're not really getting better. Like you're away from that person, but it's just still very part of your life. And this isn't like I'm doing better than you kind of thing, but there are circumstances in which we're going to heal a little better, some in which we're not going to. And unfortunately there are things that our bodies, like once the scale is tipped, aren't going to fully come out of. Right. Um, and so I do still struggle with flare ups. Um, if I injure mildly, if I work out too hard, the right side of my body, a flare up will happen because the body keeps the score. Not only with our brains, when, you know, we have a trigger, we have something come up and we're like, ah, the brain it's there. It's got it. The body keeps the score too. So whenever something happens on the right side of my body, sometimes if I interpret too much, my whole right side is like, you need to take a break. Um, but it'll go away fairly quickly. I try to drink a lot of water when that happens. I try to rest when that happens. Um, I now have the awareness that it is going to calm down. Um, and there's nothing really directly contributing to it getting worse. Um, it's now creaking. It's over here creaking. Um, but I don't really have like mysterious gut issues anymore. I haven't been hospitalized, knock on wood. Um, I sleep way better. I mean, of course I have nights. Um, I do have ADHD. So sometimes I lay down and my brain is like, woo, but then I deleted my social media. So I think that helps a lot. Um, I love social media. I think it's great. I think it can be used for a lot of good. I also think that it's not that great for us in a lot of ways. Um, and I can attest to how much better I've been sleeping since I got rid of it. So, um, if you have gotten away and you're still struggling, just know that there's still time. Um, don't compare yourself to me or anyone else. We don't know how long, like we don't know what's going on in our bodies. We don't know what might be the thing or things that we need to help get our bodies to the point where we can get better. Um, hopefully you've gotten some relief if you've gotten away from your abuser. Um, but just like with mental healing, it takes time. Um, it can depend how long you were subjected to the abuse. It can depend, you know, again, where you're at now. Um, I only know what I experienced and how I've gotten better and also still had issues. I haven't done a study where I've talked to 5,000 people who've been abused and been like, how long did it take you? Okay. Here's the average. I wish I could. I wish I did. Um, but I just wanted to talk about this to validate you. Um, if you have experienced that, if you are experiencing that to educate you, if you needed that connection in your brain to be like, that wasn't just random. That was not just random. Like I said, a lot of times our physical issues are directly related to abuse that we experience. Um, and also to give you hope. And I mean, I guess those are the three things that whenever I come on here, those are the main goals that I have. Um, educate you and validate you um, and to, to give you hope that there is healing. Again, it might not be perfect. We might not ever be exactly you know, I, I will never be the person I was before. And there are some things that that's unfortunate about. And there are some things that thank goodness I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm faster. I'm just kidding. Um, but there is still hope. And even if you are still having some kind of physical struggles that you started having when you were in the abusive quote unquote relationship, um, the good news is that if you're out right now, it, you're not being abused anymore. I hope. Um, I hope they don't have access to you anymore. And so that is at least taking away from the compounded, like buildup of continuing to have more and more abuse coming at you while you're just trying to survive and your body's suffering and your brain is suffering. So at least that's something you are a step ahead or several steps ahead from where you were when that was happening as well. That's all I have for now. And since I'm off social media for a little bit, I'm not going to tell you where to go find me. Um, you probably already know anyway. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do want you to do something nice for yourself today. I don't care what it is. Go take a bath, go take a walk, go read a book, um, reach out to a friend, journal, do something like that, but definitely go drink some water and I'll be back next week with more.